Hello again, everyone. This is the K-Man 1971 back with another comic book haul. Have a nice little Viva Variety um, themed haul, I think. Some current stuff, some uh, modern age, bronze age, silver age. Um, nice little mixture. So to get on with it, we have Spawn number one, director's cut, second print, 25th anniversary. A gold foil cover, 90s glory. Um, this was a book that I wanted, but I forgot that I wanted it, and I didn't put it on my pull list. And when I went by um, one of my comic book shops last night after work, this happened to be on the rack. Luckily, only one copy. I picked it up, didn't really think much of it. When I woke up this morning and uh, logged on to CBSI, I noticed that this book was kind of hot. <laughs> so, uh, big surprise to me, actually. I, but happy about it. So, if you see this one out there in the wild, I would definitely suggest um, picking it up. Last couple of weeks, I haven't had much out of my uh, weekly pull list to uh, show off as far as um, current stuff, but um, this week there are quite a few uh, examples of things that I think are, are pretty cool out there. So, Suicide Squad number 20, this is the B cover by Wills Patricio, where Harley is sporting a, a pretty cool, um, I don't know, almost like heavy metal slash punk look to her. So, dig it. As I've said last week and uh, multiple times before, I'm a sucker for an anniversary issue, so I um, picked up a couple of them this week. DC Rebirth, The Flash, number 25, B cover. Anytime The Flash and Zoom um, throw down, I have to check it out. I'm not a, uh, The Flash isn't on my regular pull list, but like I said, uh, I don't really need that much of an excuse to uh, pick up an anniversary issue. I also picked this up. Aquaman number 25, also the B cover. I don't know who this artist is, Sajic, but um, his art is really nice. Very unique style. Uh, I really liked it. And uh, I believe this cover is also by him. This is also the B cover. This is a book I wanted to pick up actually last week. It came out last week, but um, I spaced it out. And uh, luckily there were a couple of, there were actually two B covers left at one of my comic book shops. So pretty cool to pick that up. And of course... Wonder Woman number 25, which is also, I guess, kind of a hot book along the lines of um, the Batman proposal issue that came out a couple of weeks ago. So a beautiful Jenny Friesen cover. Um, the coloring they did with Diana's eyes on, on this cover is pretty spectacular. So very cool. And uh, another really cool double-sized anniversary issue that I'm looking forward to uh, reading. So that will do it for uh, this week's books that just came out. On to the back issues. Wonder Woman number 20, another Jenny Friesen uh, B cover. I've been noticing that um, a lot of these B covers have been um, disappearing on Midtown's uh, website, as well as a lot of my local comic book shops. So when I can see these, uh, well, this was a, a, a book that I was reading from the get-go from Rebirth, but I gave up around, well, I, I dropped it around issue 11 because just I was getting swamped with like a bunch of these titles just being bi-weekly so as um, a longtime comic book buyer with the, the way that the the market is now unless you, you're really a diehard fan and um, you're probably paying a premium price most of the time when you have a book that's on your regular pull list if you're willing to wait a couple of months a lot of times you can find these books in discount bins or at least at a discount and I've been picking these up for um Cover price, minus 20%. This is a run I would like to uh, finish off, too. I, I guess it concluded with uh, issue number 25, and I already own, like, half of it. I'm a big fan of Greg Rucker, so I, I definitely see myself uh, nipping away at this run it, it, going forward. So, uh, number 20, and my favorite Jenny Friesen cover, number 14. That cover is just, Diana looks just badass. So, very cool. Conan, number 31. This is the Mike Mignola variant cover, which uh, now I just need issue 30, and I can finally read this three-part story arc and then eventually finish off this volume of Conan that I've been um, also plugging away at. <clears throat> Sorry about my throat. having allergy issues uh, this weekend. So um, very cool. Um, 
worth noting, when I was uh, exercising after work the other night, I was listening to the Bat- the Fat Man on Batman podcast with Kevin Smith, and um, they ended up uh, dropping the 411 about Conan and Red Sonja. Well, not Conan and Red Sonja. What am I talking about? Wonder Woman and Conan, uh, a miniseries crossover that DC and Dark Horse is going to be doing, which I'm totally psyched about, especially given the creative teams. Um, it's going to be written by Gail Simone, who has easily one of the most horrendously um, underused writers and underappreciated writers in the medium right now and uh, drawn by Aaron Lepestri. So that just sounds like a crossover made in heaven. It was a crossover I didn't know I wanted to read, but apparently (laughs) I really do. I am on board for that. So yes, Conan and... Let's see how this could go out. Yes, a Conan Wonder Woman crossover, or rather Wonder Woman Conan crossover. It's going to be awesome. And if there's one um, criticism of DC Rebirth was them not utilizing Gail Simone in a, a, a bigger capacity as one of the architects of uh, DC Rebirth, as one of the main writers. So, just my two cents. Incorruptible, number one. This is part of that um, modern age, um, <clears throat> that modern age collection that I've been buying from my uh, my regular LCS, where I pick up my weekly uh, comic book set. So uh, this was part of that collection that had a bunch of modern Marvel, indie, DC stuff that I missed out on the first time around. So and everything was in there was priced for like maybe two to three dollars. I forget. So incorruptible number one, irredeemable number one. Sheltered, number one. And Uber, number one. Heard all good things about these books when they initially came out. But like I said, I missed out on on them when they when they first came out. And I, I think it's pretty cool to be able to pick them up at like two or three bucks a piece. So hopefully they're all good reads. Also from that modern collection. Secret Warriors, number one. I can't really tell you why I picked this up, actually. I know it was on my list. Um, maybe it was a first appearance. I have no idea. Maybe I'll, it'll jog my memory when I actually read the book. But um, I have no idea why I picked that up. I picked this one up for a spur of the moment. Valkyrie, number one. Really cool cover, even though I can't help but feel a little bit guilty because I just envisioned this as like a poster in some alt-right under cellar dwelling somewhere. <laughs> Wildcats X-Men Silver Age number one. If you told me that there would be an X-Men Wildcats crossover that was drawn by Jim Lee and featured a cover by Neil Adams and the book would still be below mediocre, I'd be very surprised. But unfortunately, that's what this was. Um, I remember when this was... I, I remember reading about this when this uh, was supposed to be coming out, and it was, it was, they, were, they were really hyping the fact that Jim Lee would be drawing the X-Men again for the first time in years. And after cracking this open, this is basically just a, a grifter and Marvel Girl team-up. That's it. The X-Men, the rest of the X-Men from the Silver, Silver Age era are used in very limited capacity, and uh, obviously no Wolverine, so I don't know. It just seemed like missed potential. But as an X-Men fan, I'm still pretty happy to have it in my collection. And I'd also like to pick up the Adam Hughes drawn issue of this miniseries also. Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, Nick Fury. Remember when this book was kind of hot for a minute? Um, I'm not sure who's the first appearance in this. Is it Phil Coulson? Agent Coulson? I don't know. But once again, two or three bucks. Why the heck not? All right. Legionnaires, number 16. I actually picked this one up from uh, online from Midtown. Legionnaires, number 16. This features uh, an Adam Hughes cover of uh, Dream Girl, obviously. And a uh, big fan of the Legionnaires, or well, a Legion of Superheroes, rather. Um, big fan of Adam Hughes. I saw this in a Comic Quarter 410 video, and I had to pick it up. Um, for some reason or another, I think um, Seeking Near Mint Comics will, will dig this cover. I don't know the guy very well, but... Um, Something about his videos tells me that he will dig this cover. I don't know. Uh, Millennium Edition, The Flash Comics, number one, which featured the first appearance of the Golden Age Flash, Johnny Thunder, and Hawkman. Um, 
Well, I'm not trying to collect all of these Millennium Editions. I would like to collect all the ones that have um, the first appearances of all the Golden Age characters and a, a couple of the Silver Age ones too. So when I can find them for the right price and the right grade, pick them up all the time. I think I still have like 11 more on my list. Green Arrow, number 137. And um, this is the last issue of the first volume of Green Arrow. This was another book that I want to say was hot for a little while back in the early Ognots, but I don't know if it still is or not, but I'm still a, a fan of last issues from, from my personal collection. Suicide Squad, number 48, featuring a great yet uncomfortable Steve Lytle cover of the Joker and Oracle. And pretty psyched to pick this up. I already have issue number 49, so now I can finally read the story. And, um, yeah, it took me a while to pick this book up, too. And then when I finally got it, it only cost me like 3 or $4. So, cool, cool to pick that up. Tales to Astonish, number one, which is a reprint of Submariner, number one, from his uh, Silver Age series. X-23, number 21. This is the last issue of her first ongoing series. Uh, features really great art artwork from uh, Phil Noto. And uh, a nice, a simple yet like really nice story. A nice way to cap off her um, first ongoing series. Predator, number one. Um, this <laughs> Another book that was really hot in like the late 80s, early 90s. And... Um, it, it kind of reads that way, basically Musclehead Cop taking on the Predator. <laughs> so I uh, love that cover, though. And this is the first appearance of Predator in comics. So being a guy my age, I really did like the first two Predator movies. So very cool to pick this up. Some nice Bronze Age goodness. Defenders, number 13. Uh, this is the Fenders... The Defenders versus the Squadron Sinister, a.k.a. Um, the Squadron Supreme, a.k.a. Uh, Marvel's version of the Justice League of America. So essentially, this is um, the Defenders versus the Justice League of America. So looking forward to cracking this one open in a very, very high grade for such an old book. I'm still chipping away also at that Marvel Premiere Doctor Strange run. So Marvel Premiere number 11 featuring Doctor Strange. And look at the colors pop on that issue. That's just sweet. And is it just me or is there a whole, like, I don't know, Tomb of Dracula vibe to that cover? Uh, I dig it. But um, this features interior artwork from uh, Steve Ditko, who, uh, pun intended, is no stranger to Doctor Strange. And I also picked up Marvel Premiere number 10, which uh, features interior artwork from by um, Jim Starlin. And what a way to kick off this run of Doctor Strange. Barry Windsor Smith, Jim Starlin, Steve Ditko. Pretty cool. And this was just like a run that I was totally ignorant of. I had no idea um, up until the last couple of weeks that Doctor Strange had such an A-list run of artists that worked on his, uh, on his titles. Here is an upgrade. Um, Shazam number 25 and uh, I just picked up a copy of this probably two months ago this is from that same collection that I'm always bringing up that I essentially keep buying from because he keeps on selling to the guy <laughs> so it seems like it's never ending but um, I paid $20 for this as I did for the, the my last copy that I bought a couple of uh, months ago and um, the only problem was with the copy that I bought a couple of months ago was there was a little bit of writing up in that TV box so that always bothered me. So I ended up coming across this copy, which I'm telling you, it's essentially flawless. This is, um, I, I will say, this is a, a near mint copy. Um, it doesn't seem like it's ever been read. <laughs> and uh, the colors pop on it. There's no indentations, no writing. Um, interior pages are like white. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how a book this old looks this good. So very happy to pick it up, especially for the same exact price that I picked up that, that last copy. So like I said, most of the, the books... Uh, in this collection, he just priced them all at twenty dollars, which is pretty awesome. So let me get this out of the way. Also from that collection, 
and also another upgrade, King Size Annual, the Avengers number 10, well, the Avengers number 10, King Size Annual, which I'm having a hard time talking today as usual. So um, this is the first appearance of Rogue. I already own a copy of this. It was just a placeholder, though, just um, VG. But um, this, I would say, probably VF minus, and once again, 20 bucks. So very happy to, to finally be able to upgrade it. And um, yeah, that's about it. That's all I can say about this. Must have for X-Men fans. And finally, Fantastic Four King Size Special number five um, featuring the Inhumans, the Black Panther, and what I believe in the main draw for, the, for this for me was um, special bonus, as you can see, the Silver Surfer, a complete uh, feature length thriller. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this contains the first solo Silver Surfer story, which was done by Stanley and Jack Kirby. So just for that fact, and for $20, this is, I would say, a straight up fine copy from 1967. And um, for the most part, this guy has this collection severely underpriced. I don't know what he, he's buying it for, but obviously he's making a good pro profit of whoever, which collector this uh, is selling him these books. But um, I love it. This is great. It's become part of my Saturday morning ritual. A little expensive, but... Um, but um, <laughs> I just want to say that he has other books that um, he has in this collection too. And while these are all like severely underpriced, he has some other ones that are like really corpus. He tried to sell me a copy of Submariner number one, probably a 5.5 for $300. Now, when you're buying books like this for like 20 bucks a pop, I was like, are you kidding me? But I'm not, I didn't insult him. I, I just said that I wasn't really interested. But as you know, I have been obsessing about that um, Marvel Silver Age um, expansion era. So just having that Submariner number one in front of me kind of motivated me. So I went shopping on eBay and I ended up snagging this. And this is the last issue of this haul. This is, oh, let me try to prop this up a little bit better. Sorry about that glare. Whoops, there we go. So there we have it, Submariner, number one from uh, 1968. This is like, as you can see, hopefully, a 6.0. And this did not cost me $300, obviously. <laughs> this cost me, I think, either $115 or $120 shipped. So um, I don't usually like buying slab books, but I rationalize it by... Um, at least knowing that this hasn't been restored or any kind of those shenanigans. So it's definitely a 6.0. <clears throat> and, and I'm happy with that. If, if I can buy these books at least in a fine condition, I, I mean, of course, I'd want them in a near mint or very fine, but fine seems to be the range that I can afford these books to add them in my collection. And they, I, I, I think they seem to present well, or at least well enough for my standards. So very happy to, uh, to add this to my collection. So, um, I just want to thank you all for um, watching once again. And normally I would see say um, I will see you all next week, but I think this is going to be the end of, of me doing at least weekly hauls. Um, I'm not going to stop buying comics, but I will be buying more books that are like... Um, I, I want to concentrate more on the Silver Age as of right now. I want a nice run of Jack Kirby and Stanley Fantastic Four. I want a nice Silver Age run of Amazing Spider-Man. I want to concentrate on my Bronze Age uh, Warlock run, as well as my Tomb of Dracula and Werewolf by Night runs, as well as some other big key issues that I just want to, that I've been, just been procrastinating on, as well as some other outside interests that I want to throw some funds to. So while I will still be buying books, it'll just take me a little bit longer to accrue books to um, uh, to constitute me putting out a haul. So. Um, I'll probably be putting out hauls every two to three weeks from, from now on, but at least it'll be a little bit more thriller and a little bit less filler. <laughs> Not that there's wrong with anything with filler, as you can tell from my hauls. I, I love it all. So uh, thank you all for watching, uh, liking, commenting. Thank you all for my uh, new subscribers as well as my, um, my longtime subscribers. I want you all to have a great 
have a safe and happy 4th of July. I don't have to go back to work till Wednesday, thank God. And I also took off every Friday for the rest of July, so I am looking forward to the next month. Um, I already have a couple of books and one uh, uh, yet another premiere issue from uh, the Marvel Expansion era that I will be showing off in my next haul in the next uh, upcoming weeks. So until we meet again, um, I will see you all later. Take care. Thanks for watching. See ya.